So the plan is going to be to empty this section out here so we can throw everything out that window. Yeah, it's definitely a butter turn and it still kind of works. Oh shit, I think that's another fireplace around. Hello everyone and welcome to my 120 year old fixer upper here in Nova Scotia. If you're new here, I'm Shannon Makes, adventurous homeowner by day, circus artist by night. And I've just purchased this house, not only sight unseen, but also as is, meaning it came packed to the gills with antiques, treasures, and a ton of garbage. Last week, we brought in a 16 foot dumpster and started filling it up with the contents of our basement, but it turns out that I've bought a hoarder's sandwich, so to speak, because the attic is also absolutely jam-packed with things and those things need to be sorted through which is exactly what we're gonna do in this video now some of it is gorgeous antiques and architectural salvage but there is also admittedly just a lot of junk now nobody wants to be carrying an entire attic's worth of garbage down three flights of stairs though so in the name of working smart rather than hard we started looking for other options and honestly Defenestration. I feel like it gets a bad rap, but there is absolutely a time and a place for some good old defenestration. Since we weren't 100% successful in opening up that window yesterday, well, that's not promising. We do have a plan B. That is, we were able to get one of the attic windows open, so instead we're just going to be dropping things three stories instead of two. It's gonna be landing in our backyard, and then from there it's just a short haul to take it from the backyard over into the dumpster. I think that's going to save us a lot of time and energy. So, let's get up into the attic. Oh, it is definitely way nicer up here this morning than yesterday. Just temperature-wise. I have a phone. It's missing uh, the components, but... Huh. Yeah, the handle would have been here. So cool. Then you pick up from the here, you listen. So the plan's gonna be to empty this section out here so we can throw everything out that window. And make this our sorting section. Yeah. We keep, we keep, we throw, we throw. Well, throw out the window. Out the window. <laughs> and there's the stairs to the bathroom. And a typewriter. And a typewriter. And oh, I found another phone. It's the modern kind. Hello. <laughs> Let's start throwing stuff out windows. That sounds like fun. Yeet. Um, anything that looks like this? Yeah, keep their floorboards. You keep their floorboards. Yeah, 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 of course. You know me, I keep everything. <laughs> Oh shit, I think that's another fireplace around. Oh my god, is it gonna be sewing stuff? What? Betrayal. Uh, it's not sewing stuff, it's plumbing shit. Hey, plumbing stuff. Oh, I hope there's nothing living in this. Is it a pool? No. This is, a, a I, think it's, I think it's a waterbed balloon. Out, 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 out. Or just a mattress, water mattress. Rouse. So Kennel just made her way up the attic. 
by herself. How's it going? She was bored downstairs, so she just climbed all the things. Let me sit down, give you a nice big hug, and then we're gonna find a better way to keep you trapped. Yeah, you wanna hang out with us up here? I don't know that that's so healthy for you though. That was what, like two hours of attic work? Yeah, but a bit dusty. So last week, y'all had some fantastic ideas and suggestions for fireplace solutions. So I've decided I'm gonna pick your communal brains one more time for this week's Patreon question, which is about the house's history. And it's a super interesting question from Leslie who wanted to know if my realtor was able to provide me with a timeline to the house's history, or if I had any clues as to its previous lives. And that is such a good question. And one that I know some of you have had in the comments section as well. So all I know from my realtor is basically the names of the former owners of the house. I don't really know much more than that about them. There is certainly a story there and I am learning little bits and pieces of it here and there as we spend more time here and we meet the neighbors or there are tradesmen that come through that know the family who was here. We've also been slowly learning about the house's history as we live here and work here. Although I will say because we're trying to restore rather than remodel, we haven't done anything nearly as drastic as, you know, gut the whole thing down to the studs because that would really let you see all of the walls and give you some great ideas on the construction methods and some clues as to, you know, the house's age as well as like if there were different stages of construction. But even though we haven't exposed all of the guts of the house, we have learned some very interesting facts about it, including the fact that it was almost certainly a two-story house for quite some time before having the attic put on, but even the attic is actually obviously very old, so we're looking into whether the house itself truly dates to 1902 or whether it's possible that it's even older than that. I know some of you have had conversations with me suggesting that it might predate that year, and I'm super curious to see if that is truly the case. I would absolutely love to dig into this house's history and story. Would be amazing if I could find some photos. And I'm basically up against two main limiting factors. One is time. I just don't have that much time. Whenever we're up here, we're spending all of our days and energy trying to stabilize the house and save it from crumbling in on itself. And whenever we're not at the house, it's because we're out of the country working, earning money to then come back and spend on the house. So there's not exactly a shortage of free time to investigate, but the question is so fascinating for me that it's still, it is quite a high priority. But the other roadblock I have in my mind is What's the best method to learn more about the house? What are the resources that I should look into? My gut instinct is to just turn up at the closest library and ask them for guidance, but it's probably gonna be a really small library. So my fear is that I might have to like go into Halifax for anything too complicated or, you know, deep dives, but I don't know. Anyways, if you have suggestions on where I should start my research or what type of information I should be looking for, please leave it down in the comments because I would welcome all the help I can get on this subject. But now let's get back to the task at hand because remember getting everything out of the attic was only half the job. We still have to get it now into the dumpster.
So we got about a quarter of the way through the attic, which means we cleared out one quadrant of it, but it was also the smallest, emptiest quadrant, so we probably only sorted through maybe a sixth of the stuff that was up there. The rest is gonna have to wait for another video or two or three, but listen, it was the middle of July and we were in the third story attic. It was getting really hot up there. So we decided to shift focus and clear out the basement instead because it was just so much cooler. Like listen, it had to all be emptied at some point. The dumpster was clearly gonna be filled regardless. So we just followed the weather and that allowed us to be much more productive. Also, we still didn't have power on in half of the house, the flooded half, so we just worked on the dry half instead for those days. <laughs> We already knew that the trees near the house were an issue and that they'd have to come down, but finding an extensive network of roots in the basement cemented the notion that those trees were gonna have to go. Oh my God. And it wasn't just roots we were finding in the basement. At one point, this had clearly been some sort of amateur car workshop because we found lots of old spare parts just lying around. That's an old radio. Oh, whatever that is, it's heavy. Oh, this, is a, this is a caliper. This is a car brake. Oh, wow. It's the piston that pushes the thing together. Nice rear view mirror. Car parts, okay. How we spent the rest of the morning and early afternoon, working in the basement, bagging up all the loose garbage and leaves and junk that we found, just years and years worth of miscellaneous basement debris and so much old soggy insulation and just throwing it all out. The goal was not to have a pristine looking basement by the end of the day or even the end of the month, it was just to do a first pass of sorting and emptying so that we could see what was in there, move around easily when we installed the new heating, and just try to help that damp basement dry out somewhat. So for those of you who asked to see the outside of the house, you did get to see some small shots here and you'll get to see a few more in the weeks to come as we continue to work on the exterior of the house. So just hang in there, have a little more patience. The exterior shots are coming. And for those of you who asked about where the house was, what city I'm in, you unfortunately are gonna have to live with your curiosity unsatiated because no offense, but I don't really want to disclose where specifically in the province I live. It just, it doesn't seem safe. It's nothing against you personally. I'm sure you're a lovely person, but there are plenty of not so lovely people out there and I don't need them knowing where I live. So if you have a legitimate reason for asking other than, you know, plain curiosity, you're more than welcome to email me. I've already been contacted by a couple local professionals who've seen my videos and want to know where I am in terms of seeing if working with me is feasible. And that's obviously a different story. But as far as the closing my location to the whole internet at large, I think I'm going to pass on that. And I hope you can understand. Again, it's nothing personal. It's just safety. So what do you do when it is a hot summer day and you've been working all day and you are sticky and sweaty and covered in a layer of grime anywhere and but no shower you don't have a shower well when you're in nova scotia you go to the beach let's go
So this morning we are heading off to Halifax because it is the largest city in Nova Scotia and we found a fantastic deal on some scaffolding and a shop vac, uh, second hand of course. So we're gonna go uh, do that now, hop in the car and kind of make a day trip about it check out the city, maybe catch up on some internet because we haven't had internet in the house besides our cell phones and very limited data for almost a week now. So I'm gonna make a little day trip out of it. Should be fun. Let's go. So Phil has a cousin in Halifax and we were meeting up with her for lunch, but on our way there I insisted that we swing by the Value Village because we were in need of so many things for the house, from basic kitchen supplies and sheets for the bed to more renovation specific items like these bins which were honestly so useful for emptying out the basement in the coming days. What is it? It's an apple peeler. It's a something peeler. Yeah, you do this. Halifax was brief but lovely, with a beautiful and colorful waterfront boardwalk that stretched for nearly four kilometers, and we spent most of our time there taking in the sights and smells and finding various ways to cool down the dog. At some point, I'd love to spend a bit more time here, perhaps with an actual itinerary in mind, and I could bring you all with me for the adventure. But as it was, this trip was very impromptu, and we were happy to just wander around and take in the city without a specific goal or destination. While we were in town, we made sure to take advantage of the Habitat for Humanities Restore Center that was located nearby. They accept and resell new and used furniture, appliances, and home improvement materials. And I've always enjoyed poking around the one in Montreal because the selection is never the same and there's always just something interesting to be found. Now, previously I'd mostly just enjoyed window shopping, but now I actually have a real reason to visit. Phil was still looking for some missing plumbing parts, mainly for the shower fixture, and while my needs were less urgent, I definitely checked out the rugs, just thinking ahead for winter, and also spent some time getting a feel for what's offered at the store. There were definitely a large variety of lighting fixtures, furniture, and appliances, and I made sure to check out the prices on things like tiles for the eventual moment we'll have to tackle the kitchen and the bathroom, even though, in general, it's way too soon to be thinking of aesthetic things like tiles and paint colors when our basement is flooded and our roof doesn't have gutters. But hey, a girl can dream and I'm here in search of fodder for those dreams. Before returning home, we had one more big stop on the list, and that was because I found a crazy good secondhand deal that was worth the considerable drive into the city. But first, while we're looking at all these fun home furnishings and decor, let's hop back to the question of what to do with my giant attic. Last week, I asked what y'all would do with a giant uninsulated attic like mine, and y'all had some fun ideas for it, which let's remember the attic finishing that off, it's a long, long ways away from, you know, ever being anything beyond an uninsulated storage place. But we had some really fun ideas. The top ideas included, yes, either an opium den or a speakeasy. Thank you for rolling right along with my sense of humor. And honestly, I don't know how I could have forgotten this speakeasy option. It was right there. <laughs> another option was to turn it into another apartment, which it's a great idea, but honestly, I've always chosen third floor apartments because I've never loved the concept of other folks walking above my head, but it is a creative and very financially responsible idea. Three, and this was a very popular option, a library with lots of cozy reading nooks. I love that idea so much, I already had plans to maybe turn the downstairs living room, this room right here, into some sort of library. I've got some fun plans up here, but it's true that the attic would make a stunning library. 
for was to make it a master bedroom. And again, probably not at the top of my list just because I spend so little time in my bedroom that there's no way it needs to take up the entire floor. Remember the attic is the whole footprint of this house. So it is giant and I love sleeping, but I don't love sleeping that much. Five, and this was again, no surprise, a very popular option with my audience, you, the viewers, but it was to turn it into a sewing room or a crafting space. And I agree, there's so much space that that would be absolutely amazing. The only problem that came to my mind is the lighting because of course I film a lot of my sewing and crafting and I also just like working in the light. And currently it's so dark up there that unless I added in skylights, it wouldn't be a very viable option, but Imagine how amazing that would be with some skylights. Mm. And then number six, some of you liked to combine a few of these different ideas into one, a sort of multi-purpose room with a library, lots of comfy corners to lounge around in, some places to sit and work properly and ergonomically, and perhaps also a small crafting corner. I love all of these ideas, thank you for suggesting them, gotten, you know, the creative juices flowing here. So hopefully we can look back on this in the months and years to come and see which option I ended up choosing. Well, we've hit a bit of a snag so far, which is unfortunate because the rest of the day has been going absolutely stunningly. But we are now at this gentleman's house to pick up his scaffolding. I found it on Facebook Marketplace. It was uh, absolutely perfect, exactly what we were looking for. It is much taller than everything else I found available secondhand. The price was fantastic. So I arranged with him last night on Messenger to come pick it up at this time. And uh, he gave me his address, but when I asked for his phone number, he just said, oh, I'll be around. Well, guess where I am? I'm sitting outside his house and he's not around. We rang the doorbell, we walked around the premises, we knocked on the garage door. He's nowhere to be found. Um, so that's where we're at right now. Phil is currently walking over to the neighbor's house to see if they have his phone number. And I'm just sitting here in the car with Canal talking to you guys. The problem is that we're two and a half hours from home. So if this rendezvous doesn't work today, it's not like I can just pop back over tomorrow. It's like a significant detour for me to come out here, which honestly might be worth it given the price of this scaffolding, but still incredibly frustrating. So cross your fingers that this is just a momentary hiccup and nothing more than that. At least we get a hold of you. We're happy to, uh, to wait uh, long enough for anything. Because we came from... So we'd rather wait than, uh, than do the trip again. Okay, thank you. Bye. Well. So it turns out two doors down built this guy's house and they had his number. So I just called the wife and he's probably out on the water on the sea She'll be home in 20 minutes. The other problem is, of course, that I have also scheduled to pick up a shop vac immediately after this, but because this is getting quite delayed, we're already like half an hour late at least. That's gonna push the other thing back, so it's just creating this whole chain reaction, and we still have to go back to Phil's cousin's house to pick up our clothes because she has very kindly agreed to do our laundry for us since we don't have a washer. So that's where we're at. Hopefully next time you see me, there's some scaffolding somewhere in the frame. place hiccup turned out all right in the end and the whole day was honestly a great success. We had a fantastic day out, we visited a new city, and we managed to walk away with some great secondhand deals, which despite maybe the impression that my videos can give sometimes, the secondhand market here is absolutely minuscule. It's probably something I'm going to get into a little bit deeper in a future video, but it's actually really, really hard to find stuff on the secondhand marketplace around here because it's just 
such slim pickings. So it was really fun to walk away with some great deals. We now have a shop vac, which is small, but desperately needed. And that set of scaffolding, which I anticipate being absolutely invaluable to us later on as we start to repair our 11 foot ceilings and walls. We're still missing so many basic tools around here and we're kind of just making do with what we have, what we can find secondhand because we do anticipate that installing the heating will be a substantial cost and we want to make sure that we aren't like frivolously buying tools that aren't absolutely essential, especially not right in the present moment. But that scaffolding, it retails for minimum $300 and this guy was selling his for a hundred bucks. So definitely worth the detour, even if we're not going to use it today, this week, this month. It was just such a good price, could not pass it up. We'll see what next week holds in store for us in a second, but first a quick reminder that if you're passionate about this adventure and you'd like updates that are more recent than say six months ago, there are a couple ways that you can do that. The easiest is to follow me over on Instagram because now that the house is no longer secret and we're here working on it, I have been posting lots of little progress updates from our daily work, like this fun glimpse of what all our original fireplace surrounds probably look like underneath a zillion layers of paint. The other way would be to join me over on Patreon where you can get access to my monthly vlogs and other fun little bonus updates like mini-sodes that are happening much more contemporarily. But enough for now, you've been waiting long enough, so let's take a quick peek at next week's adventures. Yeah, we're just gonna go at it, make a mess, destroy some shit. Stop! So it looks like, fingers crossed, we're gonna have a hot shower tonight, which, oh, feels like such a luxury at this point. And then we're going to tackle the chainsaw and the trees and trying to get the trees down around the perimeter. Oh, sorry. I don't have to put that in the video. <laughs> <laughs> 